Hi, I'm Patrick Sullivan. This is Recurring Insight. And for this episode, I'm going to be talking about Hum Master the Fells. Because this video series focuses so much on cards that are either inappropriately powered, in my opinion, or designs that can be improved, I like to occasionally put a spotlight on a design that I think is pretty much perfect. And in spite of Hum Master of the Fells being a strong card, it was among the better cards in its standard format. I think it stands out as an example of an excellent design to make that good. A recurring element in this video series is talking about designs that either weren't appropriate for standard or older cards that would not be appropriate were they to be reprinted. And sort of ch changes and tweaks that you could make to cards uh, to make them palatable for standard. So a question that I get a lot is, what's an example of a powerful design that you really like for standard level play or that you thought did good work in a previous standard format? And I think the top of the list for me is Hum Master the Fells. I believe that's the best execution, certainly in more of Magic's kind of modern era. There's a lot of really good things going on here. Top of the list is it's very simple and clean as far as a story goes, in spite of having a lot of text. I believe it's a design that you could show to a person who does not play magic, and they would understand what the story beat is. It's a hunter who has a wolf as a friend, and then when it turns into night, transforms into a werewolf and goes out hunting in sort of a different way. Ah! Also, I really like that the card speaks to the mechanics of the set and the block that it appears in. I think, one, to make the set feel materially different, and two, to add some novelty to standard format, I think it's really good when at least one or two of the best cards really speak loudly to a set mechanic or a set theme. It doesn't have to be across the board. It doesn't have to be the best five designs in the set, but I think Magic would be better served by having a little bit more intentional power placed into the things that the format is about or that the set is about. And Hunt Master of the Fells as a two-sided werewolf card uh, that does the day-night thing as good as you can get there. The card is also exceptional as a game piece. I've spoken a few times about uh, the dispersal of rate, the inefficiency of rate, paying out a player on a number of different axes, making the decks that they build with the card more dynamic and making the responses to the card more dynamic as well. And Hunt Master of the Fells is great there. You get a 2-2 with another 2-2. Is that card advantage or not? It transforms. How much does the 2-2 matter versus how much does the 4-4 matter? You're dealing some damage. What's that worth? There's a lot of different and sort of nebulous advantages to the player accrues. And it's not surprising that Hot Master of the Fells has largely shown up in decks that are really interactive that play a wide array of different effects because that's the way you optimize getting paid out in a bunch of small pieces rather than jamming on some linear axis. And lastly, the card engenders a bunch of exchanges where it is ambiguous who got the better end of it. For example, how good is Shock against Hunt Master of the Fells? Well, they're down there 2-2, but they still have a card left over. How much is the card worth? How much is the two life worth? If you're playing a mono red beatdown deck that's gonna trade off with the 2-2 and where the two life is really relevant, that exchange might be really bad for you. If you're playing something like Gruel Monsters, maybe the tempo that you accrue by casting a Shock on their four mana play is really, really powerful for you. And in all of these instances, whether it biases towards being good or being bad for you, it is dynamic. To say nothing of the fact that day and night enters a lot of possibilities for players to bluff or players to value playing their cards at inopportune times, to set up spots where your instant is particularly valuable, to hold a card back either to flip to one side or try to play a second card in one turn. So all of these add up to games that are extremely replayable and extremely dynamic. I think Hunt Master of the Fell stands head and shoulders above other cards in terms of being an ideal game piece to be a foundational part of a good standard format. So again, that was Hunt Master of the Fells, and this is Recurring Insight. Make sure that you're subscribed to the Sarsi Games YouTube page so you can get notified when this and other content is uploaded to the page and keep the requests coming as well. Just plowed through kind of like the last set of requests here. So I'm on the lookout for more and with any luck, I'll get to your card soon.